Hey everybody, Andrew Nolette here with Print Entertainment Group, and I am at the Nightlight Cinema here in downtown Akron, joined by Curtis Hare, Executive Director of Nightlight Cinema. Curtis, how are we doing? Really good, really good. <laughs> and uh, today what we're going to be looking at is one of the more confusing technical categories. Mm. And by that I mean we're actually going to be talking about two categories, sound mixing and sound editing. Now I'm sure a lot of people at home are like, I don't really know what the difference is. I see a lot of the same movies nominated for both, but then one's getting it for mixing and not editing and vice versa. So I guess I'm a little confused. That's why Curtis and I are here today to, uh, to explain that to the folks mm -hmm. at home. Yep. So the big thing to think about with sound editing and sound mixing is sound editing is the recording of all audio except for music. Mm -hmm. So this is dialogue between characters, then uh, this is sound that's picked up in you know, wherever setting they're at. And this is also in the studio, say they need to re-record some lines of di dialogue, that, that falls into sound editing. If they want to create all these crazy sounds to you know, put all these different you know, animal noises together and it somehow splices it all up into a computer to make a car sound like they did in Mad Max, mm -hmm. that would all fit into the bubble of sound editing. Mm -hmm. Now sound mixing is the balancing act of all the sound in the movie. You are taking all of the music, all of the audio, <coughs> all of the dialogue, all of the little sounds going around and everything, and how you combine that together to just make a beautiful orchestra, yeah. if you will, Curtis. Yeah. Um, you could call it an orchestra, mm -hmm. but I think my pick, uh, one of the terms that's been used for um, what was done in Revenant, which is mm -hmm. my pick for mixing, yes. um, is a sound haiku. Mm -hmm. And um, that's because you just have these layers, like, like a beautiful uh, audio tiramisu, yes. um, <laughs> that, that, um, where, where you have layers of what's happening in the real film world and layers of what's happening in kind of the, the spirit realm. It's almost like there are two stories taking place in the Revenant side by side mm -hmm. that you can only distinguish between them by um, listening, yes, and to me that's pretty incredible. Um, uh, Inaritu, the the director of this film, did Birdman last year, and he brought back the same sound crew to do this film. Um, and yeah, it's it's just a really really intense and, and deeply layered film that I think uh, warrants a great pick for sound mix. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things I'm most excited about with this category, with our predictions, yeah. is not only did we disagree, but how we disagreed. Uh, I think that this year it should go, sound editing and sound mixing should go to one movie, Mad Max Fury Road, and you think that the two categories should be split up. So this okay. is going to be super informative to people watching at home. Um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity. I watched uh, Mad Max and Star Wars Force Awakens, both I think two movies that do sound just beautifully. Uh, I watched them without actually seeing the movie. I kind of closed my eyes and I just listened. And I think the thing with Mad Max. That's a pro tip, by the way. That is a pro tip. Wanna, yeah, just cover the eyes. <laughs> and kind of enjoyed the sound. And I think the thing with Mad Max is the visuals in Mad Max are so powerful and so intense that we almost forget about the sound because they match so perfectly, yeah. but they are just as impressive as the visuals in Mad Max. And so looking at the sound, the sound editing, you have all these great records of cars and fire mm. and just the subtle dialogue. There's, you know, you've got one character just yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs, and then you have Max who is a very quiet. Mm. You have so much contrast. And it's mm. all all the audio is being used at the same time, it's being mixed at the same time, yeah. and that's kind of to tie in why I think it should get both awards, is that they are taking the, uh, the sound editor <clears throat> for this said that at one given time, he had 2,000 channels of audio. For the folks at home, that is 2,000 different audio pieces at one time, and you can see it in that opening car chase sequence of how much sound is being used, and he was able to mix all of that, all this great dialogue, all this quiet dialogue, use it all together, and then just subtly and abruptly just stops with the film and just stops and goes to complete silence. And I think that's one of the most powerful yeah. sound sequences, scenes, mm. that I've seen in a movie in a very long time. I mean, how many monitors do you think he had to two, stack on top of each other? 2,000 audio channels. Yeah, I, can't, it's, it's crazy. I can't even imagine it. And to, to even wrangle that much in your mind and think about how they should be, mm -hmm. it's, it's insane. Um, and I don't disagree, but when we talk about editing and you talk about these, this dialogue, I, I am looking back to Star Wars Force Awakens and I'm thinking this series also has a great lineage and history yes. in terms of like 
amazing sound editing, stuff that has become absolutely iconic. Um, ben Burt, who did a lot of the, the great sound effects, including like the voice of R2-D2. I wish I could do it for you here, but I can't. <laughs> no falsetto. Beep, beep, boop. And um, he also did like the lightsaber sounds and stuff that was just, it really, it was just new and it set a whole, uh, it set a whole new level for audio technicians. And so coming into The Force Awakens, that was another piece that it, it kind of had to live up to. And I have to say, I really think it did. Mm -hmm. And in addition to doing that, it did some new things. So when you think about Kylo Ren's voice, um, there have been a couple instances um, of films over the past couple years where they're trying to nail the sound of this voice that feels omnipresent. Um, I'm thinking of, of Tom Hardy's Bane in The yeah. Dark Knight, um, and, the, and there are a couple other instances um, where it just, just doesn't quite work. Like it mm -hmm. ends up feeling muddy, or it's like it just doesn't work. But I'll tell you, the first time I think it worked was in The Force Awakens with Kylo Ren. Um, it, you, you get this really, really crisp, um, you know, um, frightening, but also. Uh, you know what's the word? He, he's scared a little bit. Mm -hmm. You sense all of that, and it's it's kind of in your mind as if he's he's doing a force choke right there. Yeah. Um, and so I have to give it to him for that. In addition, um, there was a, a great kind of playing with tradition in terms of BB-8 sound. Um, the saber sound for um, Kylo Ren was really cool because they modified the traditional sounds. Mm -hmm. It's got more of a crackle to it. It's a little bit fierier. Um, and not quite as cold, uh, it feels more dangerous, like there are sharper edges on this zzz, whatever, I can't, I can't do it, but uh, you know, anyway, that just kind of blew me away. Yeah. Um, Star Wars was not my favorite film overall, but I gotta say the sound editing was, was pretty intense. And the thing that makes it really tough for me to not give um, Star, Wars mix, uh, Star Wars mixing is the fact that John Williams' score is in there. Yeah. Um, but I'm still gonna stick with Revenon for that. All right, Curtis, I think the folks at home now understand the difference between sound editing and sound mixing. And when it comes to Oscar time, they'll understand why this movie was nominated for mixing or why this movie was nominated for editing mm -hmm. and why this movie was nominated for both. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today in our breakout video. You can always check out our other breakout videos on our social media pages, print entertainment groups, and the Nightlights, as well as after the Oscars. Make sure to check out our social media pages because we will have a list of who did better Curtis seems confident, but I don't think he should be confident because I'll tell you what, Curtis, I think I'm taking it home. I don't know. I think my predictions were pretty spot on. Time will tell. <laughs> All right, Curtis, thank you for letting us into the nightlight here. This is beautiful space. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. See you soon. <laughs>